So we can now move into chapter 14, which is all about homeostasis. Without wasting any time, let's immediately talk a little bit about what exactly is homeostasis. By definition, they may ask this in the exam, homeostasis just means maintaining an optimum internal environment. Now, what does it mean by optimum and what does it mean what does it mean by internal environment? When we say the word optimum here, we mean the most suitable. And internal environment in this context is just the environment inside our body. So you might be thinking, what kind of environment do we have in our body? It's just a general term, but internal environment can mean things like our core body temperature, the amount of water in our blood, and also the blood glucose concentration. So for your syllabus in Cambridge A-levels, we are only going to be focusing on how our body regulates or maintains the correct amount of water in our blood and also how our body maintains the correct or optimum blood glucose concentration. Core body temperature is out of the syllabus, but I am going to use core body temperature as an example. All right. Now, no matter whatever internal environment, for example, regulating the amount of water in your body or carbon dioxide concentration or even, uh, you know, uh, amount of oxygen in the body, blood pressure, all these things are known as internal environment, right? And the internal environment cannot be too high or too low. Let me explain. So how exactly does homeostasis happen? So I'm just throwing out a person over here who's not who is not proportionate at all, but who cares that, oh my God, the hands and the legs look like they're the same length. Um, now, let's imagine body temperature. Under normal circumstances, our optimum body temperature is about 37 degrees Celsius. It's about 36.5 to 37.1, but 37, let's just put it at 37, okay? Now, body temperature constantly has to be at an optimum level because if it goes above optimum, it might be too hot, then it may cause the hydrogen bonds in our enzymes to break, cause the enzymes 3D structure to change and the enzymes may denature, so it cannot catalyze chemical reaction. Or if it's below optimum, less collisions will happen between the enzymes and substrates, so the rate of reaction will also be lower in your body. So you see, temperature Temperature has to be kept in a quite narrow optimum range. It cannot be, like for example, if your body temperature is at 39 degrees Celsius, that's quite dangerous, that's too high. Or if it's at 34 degrees Celsius, it's too low. Okay, so here's the weird thing. We do things in our daily lives which will make the body temperature either go up or go down. As an example, if you were to just suddenly walk under the hot sun, due to the heat from the sun, our body temperature might go up, okay? So as you can see, the red arrow means the body temperature is increasing. Now, that is referred to as a stimulus. So what exactly is the meaning of a stimulus in this case? The meaning of a stimulus in this situation over here is just a change in the optimum condition. So that means the body has gone through uh, a deviation or it has kind of gone beyond the optimum level and that's not good. So in this situation, what happens is when the heat when the heat is absorbed by our skin, the good news is our skin has these things called receptors. So what exactly are receptors? Receptors are just things that detect the stimulus. Stimulus is just the change. So, and the receptors in this case, using a few steps, the signal from the receptors will be sent to the brain. Actually, it's sent to an organ known as the hypothalamus, but you don't need to memorize that. But what I'm just trying to tell you is the receptor sends a signal to the control center. So the control center is just the part of the body that receives the signal from the receptor and the control center goes, oh shit, um, the body temperature is increasing. We have to do something about this. And what the control center in this case will do is they will send another signal down represented by the pink arrow back to the skin. And as you can see here, the skin starts producing sweat. So the sweat will try to cool the body down. So this is homeostasis because when the body temperature went up due to the hot sun, the skin produced sweat to cool the body down. 
to try to make it go back to 37 degrees Celsius. So homeostasis involves a stimulus which will be detected by receptors. Receptors are just structures in our body that detect the stimulus. There can be many different types of receptors which we will see later. And the receptors will send a signal to the control center. Now some students will ask the question what exactly are these signals? The signals can be things like chemical signals, which we will see in uh, later parts of the chapter, or it can also be nerve impulses or electrical impulses, which we will look at in chapter 15. So right now, you just have to say that the receptors send a signal to a part of the body called the control center. The control center will then send another signal to the effector. Effectors are just parts of the body that will produce a response. As an example, the response in this case was sweating. And look at what happens. The stimulus caused the body temperature to increase. The stimulus was the heat in this case. The response by sweating will cause the body temperature to go back to the optimum level. This is known as something called negative feedback. Negative feedback just means that when there is a change, the body responds by counteracting the change in the opposite direction. So the change was the stimulus going up and the response was making it go down. Negative feedback can also be in the situation where, okay, as an example, if your body temperature goes down, okay, uh, it will again still be detected. Let's say you walked into a freezer. How you walk into a freezer? Please don't walk into a freezer, but let's just say you did. You know, wait, why walk into a freezer? Why, why am I using bad examples? Let's say you jumped into a cold river or cold water in the swimming pool. Yeah, I think that's a better example. Okay, so when you jump into uh, cold water in the swimming pool, make sure you know how to swim, by the way. Um, so what happens is your body temperature goes down. So look at the stimulus, the pink arrow, it goes down. It will be detected by receptors, sends a signal to the control center, which sends signal to the effector. Your body will, for example, produce a response. The example is shivering as an example, by the way. Or your liver undergoes more respiration to produce more heat, and it makes the body temperature go back up. This uh, increase and return back to the optimum condition. This is also referred to as negative feedback mechanism. So homeostasis has five points that you have to mention. If a question in the exam asks you, how does homeostasis happen? They, um, you just have to say that generally in homeostasis, the stimulus where there is a change in the optimum condition is detected by the receptors. The receptors send the signal to the control center, which sends the signal to the effectors, and the effectors produce a response, which is the corrective action. Why is it called the corrective action? Because if the stimulus caused an increase in body temperature, the corrective action is to decrease the body temperature. If the stimulus caused a decrease in the body temperature, then the response or the corrective action is an increase in the body temperature. And this encompasses something known as negative feedback. Negative feedback is just your body responding in the opposite direction. As I've mentioned earlier, homeostasis is not just limited to controlling body temperature. We use homeostasis to control a lot of other things in our body. For example, the amount of water in your blood, it cannot be too high or too low or also the blood glucose concentration. It cannot be too high or too low as well. So for the first part of this video, you just have to generally be able to explain how homeostasis happens.